We're talking about raising a purpose-driven family, building a purpose-driven family in this day and in this age. We've seen how important that is. We've seen that it is got to be intentional and we've seen that it's desirable for all families to live above survival, to ha- have some semblance of uh, purpose and to basically contribute and to transform the societies. Now we need to look at the family as the basic building block in all extents of that particular word, that particular phrase, the basic building block of society. And so it shouldn't be foreign that a family can actually contribute and can be counted on to do some stuff that are purpose-related in society in order to contribute, to transform, to impact, to solve problems, and so on and so forth. And kids are raised up in that particular family, generations upon generations, knowing what that purpose is. Let's see how we can get this done in this episode. Number three, stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I do believe that uh, when you come to families, when you look at families, you can be able to differentiate one family from another. Either going to do this through looking at their capacity in terms of how well to do they are, you know, how comfortable they are, how much money, how much wealth they have and so on. But you can also look at a family in terms of what relevance is that family to society. It doesn't matter how much money they have. It doesn't matter how much money they do not have. It doesn't matter their wealth. It doesn't matter their privilege. But if you look at a family from the angle of how relevant, how much are they contributing into the society, you get that that family gets some semblance of respect. And I, I do believe that at the basic bare minimum, if the family is a basic building block of society, then I think it's okay for the family to be a center through which transformation can happen in one society or another. You notice there are very many stories that we are told. Probably you've had the story of a couple who decided to transport rocks from a particular location around their their home and just moved rocks after rocks slowly by slowly and over the years they had annihilated the rocks from a particular location and Another couple started planting trees, you know, a tree at a time and so on. And in a space of some decades, the whole place is transformed. And I'm so sure that if that story is told to the next generation, then they'll, they will see the transformation that is happening. In other words, the family exists not just to survive, not just to put food on the table and clothes on their back and fend for themselves and so on. It's not a selfish kind of existence. A purpose-driven family asks themselves this question, what can we do to transform our society today? What can we be known for? What can, how can we be relevant in the society that we live in today? How can we contribute to this society? How can we be able to impact it? They look at a problem in the society and they see, how can we, how can we solve this problem? How can we be known as the ones who are solving this problem? How can we put blood, sweat, and tears so that this thing is finalized, so that this problem is elevated, it is removed. 
That is, I think, the way that all of us need to operate at a family level. But if we're not going to make it intentional, guess what is going to happen? It's not going to occur at all. So the question will be, how? The how is the question that we need to answer. Because we're already talking about purpose. Today, I've seen very many campaigns going on in Kenya. People are vying for presidential seats, you know, gubernatorial seats and, and so on. And uh, it's going to happen in the year 2022. And so people are positioning themselves. And the thing that you will hear people talking about is, I will do this and I will do that. And I will do this and I will do that. Um, every time I come across such like promises, I'm just replying with one question. How? Where is the plan? Show me the strategic plan. Tell me exactly how you intend to pull off this miracle that you're talking about. So that's the question that we need to answer also here. How can a family become purpose-driven? A recap will do. Number one, we say that the leaders of that family, the parents, they've got to discover their own purpose and they've got to start living that purpose. In fact, maybe by the time the kids are showing up, they are living that particular purpose. Maybe not fully or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, but at least they do know what their purpose is. You know why? Because children are hero worshippers. Children capture vision more than they are taught. They will see what's happening and they will start gravitating towards it. And I'm going to talk more about that today. Secondly, we say that you need to download a mega vision for you as a family. As a family, you make a decision that we are going to be known for this and that and that. We're going to be known as a family that builds health centers in rural areas. Or we're going to be known as a family that raises up leaders. Or we're going to be known as a family that entertains people. You remember the Wayans family? I mean, generations upon generations of entertaining the whole wide world. That's a family of entertainment. But it may, you make a decision to do that. We're going to be known as a family of sports. Like, you remember the Williams family? They are playing tennis, you know. Anyway, you, you get my point. You need to make a decision. You need to decide and download a God-given vision and pursue that vision. Something that is grander, bigger than yourself that maybe you might not even be able to fulfill it as a couple together and maybe even as a nucleus family. It might need to extend to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation after that. It's not something foreign. It's something not that, you know, I've get it, gotten it from somewhere else. It's something that used to happen in the traditional African society. Clans were known for a particular function. Clans were identified for their functionality in society. And by the way, when they were, when they used to do this transition ceremony, circumcision and so on and so forth, these rituals, people will be assigned responsibilities from their lineage. My point is that if you wanted to raise a purpose-driven family, you've got to download a, a vision greater than you. And it's vision, that vision is, is going to emanate from your heart, from your spirit. There are things that you're passionate about. Just ask yourself, if I had all the money in the world and the time in the world, what am I going to dedicate my life to? That becomes your vision. And now you start pursuing that vision. You start talking about it you know, at the dinner tables and, and so on and so forth. And the kids, they capture that vision and they start living it. When they are old enough, they start remembering the importance of that. Today I want to take a small tangent here. Talking about a purpose-driven family, how do you raise a purpose-driven family? And I'm going to go maybe on the opposite end of what I've been sharing in the previous two episodes. Today, I'm going to talk about this. If you wanted to raise a purpose-driven family, number three, make sure that you celebrate the uniqueness of every individual in that family. In other words... I know the family is supposed to have its vision and you're, you're supposed to live your purpose and so on. But you need to recognize the idea and the fact that every single member of that particular family doesn't come empty on the face of the earth. They come loaded with a calling. They come loaded with a purpose. They come loaded with a direction 
in life that they're supposed to take and it becomes the responsibilities of the leaders of that particular family to be adventurous enough and start exploring what are these guys gifted in what is their talent what has what are their abilities what are they passionate about and you start leaning into these ones where i'm saying that you you stop this uniformity you stop starting to gravitate everyone towards a particular uniform direction and you now realize that every individual has purpose and you start celebrating the purpose of every individual uniquely you don't put someone down because this one is going to be an artist and the other one is going to be a doctor you don't compare and contrast them you celebrate their uniqueness and you and at their purpose yes you as a family who said yesterday that you live your vision and so on but as so as an individual look at the individual child look at the daughter look at the son what are they uniquely gifted what are they uniquely positioned to do in this world as an individual that is important because it's going to leave this family is going to make this family to gravitate more towards purpose than uniformity uniformity is what this world is offering us that everyone who is born has got to you know get to 5 years or 4 years or maybe even 3 years and see bizarre things you know 3 years people being taken to boarding school what are you kidding me you know and being put in 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 in, in something that they are going to do the same with someone else uniforms and so on and so forth shine uniformity but if uniformity is there and there's no way you're going to circumnavigate it celebrate the individual uniqueness and and add their vision and add their purpose as unique individuals and celebrate them and give an environment through which their uniqueness is going to be exemplified that way they lean into their vision they lean into their purpose and the family becomes a purpose driven family when we talk about a family becoming purpose driven doesn't mean that everyone is doing the same thing necessarily of course that is one way but the other way is that everyone is doing their purpose and it is being supported centrally in that family family and then everyone in in case they are going to mature and progress and grow in their individual unique purpose they come back and they support the one vision of that particular family that is how you raise a purpose driven family If you are not going to celebrate the uniqueness of people <laughs> it becomes so difficult for you to inculcate purpose into them because remember sometimes you cannot force people you know parents sometimes are in these situations where they are saying my son is going to be a doctor my son is going to be a lawyer my son is going to be a teacher my son is going to be an engineer my son is going to be an accountant very very few parents say my son is going to be a teacher my son is going to be an artist my son is going to be a chef few and that is a wrong way of looking at things we need to celebrate uniqueness because in the uniqueness of everyone there lies their purpose and once their uniqueness is celebrated in that family purpose is born in their unique individuals Tomorrow we'll carry on from there and uh, share on what else we can be able to do to raise a purpose driven family but until then I want you to start considering the uniqueness of every member of that family. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.